<laughs> I was a singer first and then an actress. Could you dance? Yes. Wow. Not I don't I don't consider myself a dancer. But, but you I, had the coordination. And no, I, in our business we say I'm a, I'm a, I, I I'm an actress who can dance. You never say I'm a dancer if you're not a dancer because it's it's such a such an important it's so it's so difficult. I would never call myself a dancer. No. Um, yeah, because I think. Acting is so underappreciated because people, some, I guess some people are natural doing it, but you have to be secure enough in your personality to act like something you're not. Right. It's a lot of fun, actually. Is it fun? I did my, I haven't done a play in 20 years and um, since Rupert, uh, Rupert Holmes wrote one for me years ago. And uh, uh, I did it in down in Tennessee where I live. I just did a love letters, which has been done forever, with Patrick Cassidy of the Cassidy family. And and I just had a ball. I had to go from a seven-year-old little girl to uh, a woman in her 60s, which is hard for me because I'm nowhere near, you know, my 60s. Look at seven. <laughs> I'm nowhere near seven. Yes, that's what I'm going to go with. Right. Uh, yes. Yeah. And it was great fun. I thought, you know, I don't use my acting chops. Uh, I, I made a film a couple of years ago that I wrote for Craig Ferguson and my and me to right. do. And uh, I, we'd shot that in, in uh, uh, the highlands of Scotland. He's one of my favorite human beings on the face of the earth. He's my favorite agnostic in the whole world. And you got put to put together with him uh, because of uh, hosting, right? Because he he had, was a well, fill-in. I'd known him since the Drew Carey show years before. That's when we first met, and I just loved him. And then... Um, Hoda was on maternity leave and he was there for five days with me and I've done a very, very successful, thank you, Lord, uh, television, daily t- television with Regis for 15 years and 11 years with Hoda, but I've never had more explosive five days in my life. Right. Well, there was that time. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. With, uh, with Craig, with right. Craig. And, and, and it's funny. We went to lunch afterwards. He was going to get on a plane. Did he feel the same way, by the way? Did he tell you? Yes, yeah. because we went to lunch on Friday when it was all over. And, he, and we, we go to lunch, and, and he says, like, I'm going to, you can't, I'm, I'm going to bleep him out. Okay. He said, well, you know, Kathy, we were trying to harness. What do we do next? You know, Kathy, if we wait for our agents, our mm-mm agents, to, to get us a job on television, we're going to die waiting. And I said, oh, you're right. He says, why don't we write a movie together? I said, Fantastic idea. Okay. He got on a plane. I went to Connecticut. Two o'clock in the morning, I wake up. Bing. I go, oh, my gosh, I think I know what the movie is. I go downstairs. I light the fire. I got the puppies with me. I start writing. At noon that day, I call him up. And I go, hi, Craig. He goes, yeah, what? Yeah, it's just, he just yeah, got yeah, yeah. You know that movie that we, we yeah. were going to, he says, yeah, yeah. I said, I think I just wrote it. He goes, what? He said, God, you haven't even landed my, you know, Scottish and back down to, into home and, and you've written it. What are you talking about? And I said, yeah, I've got written six scenes. I think I know what the, the character should be and what, what should happen in Scotland. He goes, well, send it to me. And that's so why I sent it to him. He calls me the next day and he goes, Kathy? This is your baby. I stand ready to serve. Wow! So we shot it in um, we shot it in in Scotland, and it was one of the great experiences of my of my whole life. And I what love was the him. name of the movie? Then came you. Okay, so you can still you can still watch it. Oh, you could. I think it's like Prime Video or Hulu or those things never die. And I I uh, co wrote all the the entire soundtrack with a brilliant writer in Nashville named Brett James. And uh, seven seven songs, and it, it it just was a. That's actually what got me to to move to Nashville, the area, because uh, I was coming back and forth working with Brett for a year, and every time I'd get on the plane to come home, I honestly, Brian, I was just like heart sick. I was just, oh, why am I so happy here? Right. And it wasn't because I didn't love the people that I work with at the Today Show. I do, and I did. Hoda's still a very dear friend of mine, but it's the culture there. And I said, why am I so joyful here? Because New York. Uh, as good as this town has been to me, and I've lived here for 40 years, uh, it's the culture ha- here has changed completely since I moved you here. You mean in our business or walking the streets? Everything. Uh, there are wonderful people here in New York and New Jersey and, and, and this whole area. They're, they're, they are. I'm talking about it's a culture, though, of chaos now to me. And I flew in. I was going to Nashville and down in South, and every time. It, that's a culture of kindness there. Right. People are just sweet, and it's not put on. I'm sure there are a lot of jerks. I just have never met them. Just like, you know, there's super, super good, great people up here. It's the, I noticed it, that it's the cult, it's the quality of life ev- er- eroding and that sort of thing. So I made the move. There's a line in my movie that says, 
uh, she says to a, uh, to her dead husband, she says, you know, Fred, I love you, but I got I to gotta make new memories or the old ones are going to kill me. And I'm not ready to die. Wow, not that's yet. sad, though. Yeah, it's, I know what you're saying. But it's the truth. I've been away. To, well, Frank's been gone now almost seven years. So wow, it is the truth. And sometimes you got to take a very brave leap and go someplace else. I'm sure you've talked to Elizabeth Hasselback since you've been down there. Right? I did. I've been together with her a couple of times. But she's. I adore. I adore her. I, I, I sat. She said she just had to get out of New York and Connecticut, and yes. she wanted to go. And she did. She did right for her family. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's like I when I left the show with Regis, I, I left it to do right by my family. Regis was, um, you know, he understood. Uh, I just had to get my family off the off the rags, you know, you know but, off the but, news, but newspaper you, covers. You know, it's also good is you actually told him ahead of time, right? So you oh, told him oh, and you, you knew about it, so you know how to land the plane. Uh, well, Regis was one of my closest friends. Yeah, and uh, and and we never had a harsh word in fifteen years, and uh, we became even closer friends after I, I left in two thousand. And uh, he died just a year ago, a year and a half ago now. And your spouses were tight too, right? Yep. So when you guys yep. went out, it was oh, oh, but you know, it's you know, Regis. We'd want, we'd we'd try to make plans for a nice quiet dinner, the four of us, or something like at Val Bella or one of those yeah. places in 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 Greenwich. We'd walk in, we'd have a quiet little table set aside, and Regis walks in, and he goes. Hello, it's Regis. That's right. Look at look at me, everybody. Yeah, Regis is here. And look, look who she won't leave me alone. And he'd point right. to me. It's it's Kathy <laughs> Lee. And I'm going, oh, boy, here we go. Every single table he would go to and say hello to everybody. Yeah. He was so beloved. There was nobody in the world like Regis. Yeah, my first big interview, I was in college doing college radio, and I and they always say success leaves clues. So what do you want to do? I love Letterman and uh-huh. I love Regis. Right. So I interviewed Very them both in college. Men. <laughs> yes, but they liked each other. Oh, they were close. Right? Yes, yes. Um, and they're also, uh, I think they're both very curious by nature, unbelievably talented. I think, obviously, Regis more diverse. He could sing. He could do everything, I thought. Let's not go that far. You don't think so? <laughs> or, well, I mean, kind of talked it through. You know what Frank but he could do his own say about show. Regis' singing? Like, oh, he did a great show. Yeah. He would stand up and he would do a little shtick yeah. and all that stuff. We did it together for years. <laughs> Frank once said to me, you know, Regis is not a bad singer, but he can't finish a song because he could never hit the big note. At oh, the, really? He, says he just can't finish the song. Wow. Uh, but he, I always thought he was so uh, so interesting, so engaged, Every everything. That, that that first 20 minutes that you guys would do. 23 is, minutes ago. Excuse me, on my fault. Yeah, uh, no. I stand corrected. We started out at like six and then went to commercial break. Very soon it became 23 minutes. And how long would you talk before you? Uh, Not, never said a word nev- to each before other. The, before. Never even said good morning. Just yeah, we just kept it really fresh. So he would come out and talk about what he did last night. Yes. Would you see his notes or anything? We didn't have notes. He would sometimes have what we call elements in, in you know, yeah. had he had, say he'd been to a Broadway show, he'd have the playbill or, and yeah, we yeah. always had the newspapers. Right, and it's interesting. We made a pact when we started. Uh, we were a local show for three years, and we we had both been done national stuff. And uh, uh, but but he was well known for his local show in Los Angeles, and so I I joined him in New York, and I left Good Morning America. Actually, I was in line to take Joan London's place, and I didn't want to. I wanted to have fun. Right. I wanted to work. I didn't want to read a teleprompter. I wanted to be with. with you don't want to get up at two thirty in the morning. It wasn't that. It wasn't that. I I get up that early anyway. Yeah. It uh, it was that I I didn't want to read back then it was all teleprompted and I just thought I'm an actress I'm an entertainer right. I'm a singer I I'm not going to be happy doing this so I said I'll go for a year and uh, I was trying I was getting a, a divorce in in uh, L A and I said it'll be a good year for me to get away so anyway uh, what would you what did you ask me about Regis. I was That's saying when you first went read, you wanted yeah. to be with him because you didn't want to do the Good yeah, Morning America. Yeah, there is a reason for it. Anyway, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm 68, so forgive me. Well, uh, um, something about Regis. I'd oh, uh, newspapers. I, yes. Oh, this. Thank you for. Thank you for. You actually, you're a good host because you actually remember right. things. And you. I'm listen, not that good a host. They told listen. me to rap. But no, go ahead. no, no. We have I'll to talk you. about my dude. for goodness sake. No, sakes. no. We have another segment. Oh, wrap that thing. Okay. Next. All right. So we're going to talk about. But I'm going to forget uh, about what I was. <laughs> no, no. I'm going to. Re- that's why I'm here. This is the brilliant password player and talented writing and broadcasting star, Frank Gifford. The password is diaper. Ten points. Give me the game. Absorbent. <laughs> <laughs> Diapers. Yeah. Frank Gifford on Password with Alan Ludden. You know what? He was a champion. Main a lot of the time. He just loved Betty. 
He yeah. and Betty White were good pals. People think that that you know because he, he's gorgeous and he was a football player. He was stupid. You know, he was not stupid. Oh, he was a that. really really bright man. And well, Cosell said so. Remember? Oh yeah, yeah. And who did who did Cosell call when he was on his deathbed? The Giffer. He did. Oh boy. They made up at the end. Well, well he was never Frank's enemy. Frank doesn't have an enemy. But but you know he was just Howard was a troubled man and he was jealous. He was jealous. I never played the game. Well, you know, then don't talk about it like you know it, like people that played the game. That's not a compliment. I know. <laughs> you know? I, know I know. He didn't want, he didn't think athletes belonged in the booth, let alone play by play. Oh, my. And he was so, you know, and I, one, when he was dying, we were in the car driving, and Frank called him, and he said, he said, uh, uh, Howard, I just want you to know that Kathy and I are praying for you. And and he goes, well, I appreciate that. I can't do a good Howard. And and he said, and Frank said, well, I didn't say which way we were praying. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> he just yeah. teased him. Frank was a beautiful man. I I agree. I could do a whole hour, but I want to make sure you get uh, everyone knows about your special. Okay. Uh, so it was on Sunday, right? It premiered last night, and I think it just streams now. Now it streams. Yeah. So go to Fox Nation. And it's the Jesus I know. And you want to, you, in doing it, that title means something. It means that I'm not telling you how to view Jesus. No. I want to know what you think Jesus is. Yes, right? I know the Jesus that I know. Right. What I'm interested in is this Jesus that you know. And uh, even if you don't believe in him, what is your, con- your, your preconceptions? Or what are your, do you believe he was even a historical, truly a historical person? Or do you think, it, you know, whatever you think, I find fascinating. And um, I've always felt like I'm not a fan of religion. I'm a fan of relationship with the living God. I don't believe it's uh, that, that that entity, that, that being that is, uh, is somebody that we're supposed to go and visit once a week. And you know, you know, maybe pray, you know, here and there. That's supposed to be the center of our life is our relationship with the living God. And so, uh, but but that's me. And I study rabbinically, and I, I take it very, very seriously. But there are 25 stories in this book of people who are completely different from me. And actually, the the reason I wrote the book, I had no intention of writing this book. I have a very, very good literary agent here, and he's ex- if he could not be further. From to than than me right. in terms of you wouldn't think that a, that a gay uh, Asian uh, Buddhist male would would be any similar at all to me you know and that's the problem with our world today we want everybody to be exactly the same I love true diversity is is finding people like that that you think what would we have in common and then you discover lots right. we have a lot in common. Is, is that is that your music giving you a cue? I knew you were going to pick up on that. You okay. always pick up anyway, on this. Anyway, he you're said, the host. write a book about that. Those are my favorite stories you ever write. How do we get the book? It's here. It's been out since. Yeah. You know what? The, I was on with you. You are busted. Right. I was on with you I, in December you when it plug. came out. I wanted no. you to plug. Oh, come on. No, that's that is, it. That is not Wait a minute. true. I need that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.